Well, kia ora everyone. Welcome along to Treasures and Tales Dino Discovery. My name is Professor Meg Ladon, and I'm so glad all of you interns showed up. I was looking for some more helpers to help me find some more sea monster fossils. It's a good thing you're here. If you have any questions along the way, please just put them through onto our questions section on our Facebook page and we'll look at them at the end. But for now, let's get fossil hunting. Our journey begins a long, 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 long time ago. 65 million years ago, in fact. Deep in the oceans, there lived some incredible creatures like the ammonite here. It looked like a type of squid and it had an interesting shell, but there were some much larger things lurking in the deep. Maybe you've seen it. We have a mosasaur, and this one is called Moanasaurus. She lived in the oceans around Aotearoa for millions of years. But all that's left from these creatures today are their fossils. And finding fossils is what paleontologists do best. Paleontologists like me study ancient life and about things that lived many, many millions of years ago. But in order to know about things that lived millions of years ago, we need to look at fossils like the ammonite shell buried in there. Now fossils are remains of the past that have been kept safe and preserved under layers of mud and sand and rock. And over time, some of these remains were replaced with minerals through a process called mineralization. So there are two main types of fossils that we are going to focus on today body fossils and trace fossils. Up here, we have a dinosaur called a Cryolophosaurus. It's a type of theropod dinosaur, and it's a very good example of a body fossil. Body fossils are usually bones or other body parts that were mineralized, which made them extremely hard, and it let them survive through the ages. Trace fossils, on the other hand, are a bit more mysterious. The Cryolophosaurus you can see, you can actually find that at the Auckland Museum. Well, let's take a closer look at trace fossils. I mentioned they're a bit more mysterious because there's no body part involved. If you look carefully at the image we have here, you might be able to see the outline of a footprint. Now this footprint would have come from a theropod dinosaur, a bit like the Cryolophosaurus that we just saw. Now, trace fossils can include footprints, but they can also be other things, like, for example, nests or burrows, anything that leaves behind a clue about the creatures that used to live there. So, trace fossils are very useful. Well, all this talk about dinosaurs. What even is a dinosaur? We know some dinosaurs looked a bit like the ones on the image there, but there were lots of other animals alive at the same time that looked like dinosaurs, but they weren't actually dinosaurs. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Up here, we have three different animals. At the top of the screen, there's a pterodactyl, down the bottom, we have a mosasaur. And on the right side, there's a penguin, of course. Now, only one of these is actually a dinosaur. Can you pick out which one it is? Are you ready for the big reveal? Well, believe it or not, only the penguin is a dinosaur here. Let me explain. So the pterodactyl and the mosasaur look like dinosaurs, 
but they are actually a separate group of reptiles. The penguin and all the other birds that we see alive today are what we call avian dinosaurs. They are actually the last living line of theropod dinosaurs, just like Cryolophosaurus. But how would we even know? Well, the clues are in the hips. Check out these skeletons. A dinosaur hip is very similar to a bird hip. And you'll notice their legs are directly below their body. Their leg bones create this S shape as well. Reptile hips, on the other hand, are a very different shape and it lets their legs stick out sideways, like reptiles and lizards that we see today. But we're not here just to talk about dinosaurs today. We want to see some more sea monsters, don't we? And I am so excited. I've been waiting for this moment because I have some of my favorite sea monster fossils that I want to share with everyone. And here's the first one, are you ready? Check this out. Look at the size of the teeth on this fossil. They're enormous. The whole thing is about a meter long. There are some very large gaps, which would have been eye sockets. So the whole fossil is actually just the skull of a mosasaur, just like Moanosaurus. So let's see what we actually know about mosasaurs. They lived about 98 million years ago when the world looked a little bit more like this. And mosasaurs went extinct about the same time as the dinosaurs did 65 million years ago. Now, mosasaurs were enormous. They had all of those sharp teeth for hunting other sea creatures with. So for example, they like to he eat and hunt things like plesiosaurs, giant prehistoric turtles, and even other mosasaurs. And they were huge creatures. Mosasaurs could grow up to 17 meters long. That's about as long as four cars lined up. It's pretty huge. And they needed to eat a lot to reach that size. Also, they weren't just big, they were also powerful. The jaw of a mosasaur can crush a car. So that can give you an idea of how strong they were. Now, you might be wondering, if a mosasaur is that big, how can it even move through the water? Well, you can see it has a very streamlined body. It has four limbs, which are called paddles, and those would help it steer through the ocean. But the key to their movement was their long tail. So their tails propelled them through the water by sweeping from side to side. So they swam a bit like eels do today. Actually, why don't we try this out? Put your hand out like the bottom jaw, put your other hand on top, like you've made a mouth of a mosasaur, and now we're gonna sweep from side to side. And we're moving like a mosasaur. All right. Well, up next, I have a fossil that wouldn't have moved much at all. Check this one out. It might look a bit like an ordinary plain old rock, but actually, this is a piece of coprolite. And that's a fancy way of saying it's fossilized poo. Yep, you heard that right. So coprolite is actually a treasure trove of hidden information. Now here we have one from an ichthyosaur, but plesiosaur coprolite is very similar. Both of them often have little black marks in them, which are the remains of fish scales. So these sorts of pieces of coprolite can tell us that a plesiosaur was a hunter. They're very useful for putting together the life of a plesiosaur. And if you're wondering what a plesiosaur might have looked like, well, you can recognize them by their long necks. And they also have a bulbous body. Now, this is actually one you can see for yourself at the Auckland Museum. And plesiosaurs had interesting teeth. If we have a closer look at their mouth, 
you'll notice their teeth were specially designed to interlock. They were stealthy hunters. They had to hide their bulbous bodies out of sight, and then they'd reach out their long necks and snap up any unsuspecting fish that were swimming past. Now, plesiosaurs had a very different body shape. They didn't have a long tail, just a stumpy one. So their swimming style relied on their big flippers. So they had four paddle-like limbs and they used them a little bit like a penguin does today. So let's try it out. Put your arms out sideways and then move them up and down as if you're flapping through the water. So now you're paddling like a plesiosaur. Awesome. All right. So plesiosaurs also like to swallow big rocks. It would help them sink down when they're hunting. Otherwise, they just float back up to the top. Well, I have one more fossil that I want to show you. Here we have a picture of it on the left. That is a huge tooth from an ancient fish. On the right, you can see the teeth of a great white shark. But the one on the left was from a prehistoric shark. You might have heard of it before. It's called the Megalodon. And these guys were enormous. They grew slightly bigger than the Mosasaur did, up to 18 meters long. Now, they weren't as old as Mosasaurs or Plesiosaurs. They went extinct about 5 million years ago, but they did rule the oceans for millions of years before that. Now, that tooth that I had earlier was part of an enormous mouth. Mo Mo Megalodons liked to hunt very large prey like whales. But in order to take a bite out of a whale, you need to have an enormous jaw. So let's take a look at how big that actually was. Here we have a full jaw from a megalodon, and you can see a person is very small next to it. They could open their jaws three meters wide. That's big enough to have both of your parents and the neighbors and the cat, and then still have room for more. So that is an enormous jaw. And that tooth would fit in there very nicely. In fact, megalodons had about 276 teeth at any time. And they had something that modern sharks still have today, which is known as rolling teeth. They have rows and rows of teeth behind the first row. If one tooth falls out, a new one is pushed forward from the row behind. All right, so they always had a full set of sharp teeth ready to go. Imagine how much money they could make from the tooth fairy. Wow, well done everyone. We have learned so much about sea monsters and dinosaurs. I think it's time we have a look at some of your questions. And joining me for this is one of my colleagues, Dr. Doug Down. So hopefully he'll be able to join us. Oh, hello everyone. I'm Hello. very excited to join my colleague, Professor Ladon, and answer some of your questions today. Well, how about we start with the very first one that mm -hmm. says, are the fish that were around at the time of the sea monsters the same ones that we have today? Well, good, good thinking. All the fish we have today are descendants from the ones that came before. So just like we have family members that came before us, all the animals would have had ancestors as well. But over millions of years, they would have evolved to turn into what we see today. So they might have looked a bit different back in the prehistoric times, for example. Well, how about you take the next question, Dr. Down? Well, this is a really good question, actually. Did plesiosaurs get rocks stuck in their long throats? Oh. That's a really good question, because like Professor Ladon said, they would swallow rocks so they wouldn't float back up to the surface and they could stay nice and low in the water. And possibly they might have gotten some rocks that might have been a little bit too big to swallow, and those might have gotten stuck in their necks. But most of the time they would have picked rocks just the right size 
to swallow and keep them nice and low in the water so they can hunt fish with their really long necks. Yeah. I can see a good question. Would the Megalodon's teeth have been white like ours? Well, back when they were alive, most likely, because most teeth were that color, but you might see that some of them have aged. If you see a fossil, it would have been replaced with a mineral, so it might not be the same color as when it was alive. But most likely when they were alive, they would have been white or an off-white. <laughs> I don't suppose they'd brush their teeth the way we do. Probably didn't have the same level of hygiene. <laughs> I've got an interesting question here. Which yeah. dinosaur had the biggest coprolite? Ooh. Now, coprolite is quite a funny thing that us paleontologists have found on our digs, because not often that you actually get to find a trace fossil like coprolite. But I'd say the bigger the dinosaur, the bigger the coprolite. So maybe some of the really big sauropods would have had really big coprolites but we wouldn't be able to know unless they were fossilized. So it's very lucky that we have the ones that we do have today for us to study about. Very good. I have another good question. Mm -hmm. Do you know why dinosaurs went extinct? Ooh. Well, 65 million years ago, there was a world changing event where an asteroid collided with Earth. And not only did it collide with Earth, but that impact would have changed all of the Earth's ecosystems. So that would have been the starting point of how all the dinosaurs went extinct because all of their resources started to disappear. Do you have any more to add to that, Dr. Down? I think that's a really good explanation to that. It's, it was quite a big and dramatic event that unfortunately killed all our dinosaurs. Um, but because of the way that they were um, killed, that's meant that we have a really good record of what was living 65 million years ago. And as paleontologists, we use all these fossils that we find to learn about them. And talking about things that lived a really long time ago, I see a question here that says, are Tuatara's dinosaurs? Oh, that's, a, that's quite a good question. And it's a question we get asked quite a lot as well. So Tuatara's, a lot of us know that they are quite old. And a lot of us think that they are dinosaurs, but in fact, they're completely different. And just like Professor Ladon said before, dinosaurs and reptiles are two different groups. And then the family that Tuataras come from is even a, a different one altogether. So they would have been related to dinosaurs and they lived the same time as dinosaurs did, but we would not consider them a dinosaur today, no. That's right. And the same goes for crocodiles as well. They are actually reptiles separate from dinosaurs as well. Now, I found a, I've got a really funny question here. Yeah, Will I get in trouble for calling my brother a coprolite? Well, <laughs> assuming that your brother tuned in to um, our live stream today, you might get away with it if they don't know what a coprolite is. But you might have to, you might have to check first. <laughs> each to their own. <laughs> well, I see another one. What was the tallest dinosaur? That's one of my favorite dinosaurs. It's mm -hmm. called Brachiosaurus. So they were incredibly tall and they actually had their nostrils up between their eyes, which was a bizarre feature of their anatomy. <laughs> so Brachiosaurus holds the record for being the tallest dinosaur. And related Brachiosauruses, actually, I found a question that says, do brachiosauruses fight back? And that's a good point, actually, because not a lot of us think that the really long necked sauropods could fight back. But brachiosauruses had a big spike on where their thumb would have been on their feet. And they would sometimes use that spike to fight. And then there's also a theory that if a brachiosaurus whipped its tail really fast, it could be faster than the speed of sound but there's no way of knowing, but it's a pretty cool theory if it was real. Yeah. Well, there's another good question. Could the plesiosaur go on land? Hmm. Well, plesiosaurs weren't actually designed to come out of the water. Their bodies needed the water to support their weight. A lot like whales today, a whale can't come onto land because it needs the water to hold all its body weight. So it's 
very safe to assume that plesiosaurs would have been in the same category. And also they didn't have legs to walk on. Their paddles wouldn't be able to move them across the land either. Good question yeah. though. I've got an awesome question here. Someone's asked what color was the T-Rex? Now that's, that's, that's a quite a fascinating question because in recently, we've kind of been thinking about what colors all these dinosaurs would have been because when they leave fossils behind, we can only see their bones and they don't leave behind any skin or any other soft part of their body. So whoever has been drawing all the dinosaurs so far has been making really good guesses as to what color they might have been. But in actuality, we don't know what colors they were. In fact, some people even think that the T-Rex might have had feathers as well. So the T-Rex might not have been all that scary if it had feathers on it, but I still <laughs> wouldn't want to be chased by a T-Rex, I don't think. I think with those teeth, it wouldn't matter if it was fluffy. <laughs> no, definitely not. Well, there's another one. J uh, Riley is asking, what's a fossil? Well, hmm. fossils, just to recap, are remains of the past that were kept safe under layers of mud and rock and sand sometimes. And over time, they were replaced with minerals. So that's a process called mineralization. And so even though fossils look like what used to be the object, they are actually basically copies of them made out of another substance. So that's why coprolite doesn't actually smell anymore because it's been replaced with minerals. That's very lucky. I'm quite glad coprolite doesn't smell anymore. Yeah. Here's a question. What did the Megalodon eat? So Megalodon, <laughs> the giant prehistoric shark with an enormous mouth would eat things like prehistoric whales. Now we all know how big whales are. So to have a mouth that is big enough to eat a whale would have to be really big. And along with the Megalodon, there was another really big predator that used to fight alongside it called a Leviathan. And that used to have really big sharp teeth as well. And so both Megalodon and Leviathan would chow down on whales. So I kind of feel bad for the whales that they would eat. <laughs> oh dear. Well, there's another question where someone wants to know, were the fish bigger too? Well, in all likelihood, you would have had all the size range. If the megalodon's the biggest end of it, then you'd have all the sizes down to tiny fish from there. Good question. I've got one here. What was the biggest dinosaur found in New Zealand? So New Zealand is quite a special place to find fossils. Because we have, we've, based, we've been under the ocean for a very long time. And then recently, in the maybe the last hundred or so million years, we've come up out of the ocean and we have a lot of marine fossils from plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs. And someone that found all those marine fossils was, uh, was a woman called Joan Wiffen. And Joan Wiffen has an enormous collection of fossils. Some of them that you can actually even see at the Auckland Museum as well. And Joan Whiffen um, found fossils from plesiosaurs and arm bones from their paddles. So those were pretty big as well, I would say. Very cool. And someone asks, are there many trace fossils found in Aotearoa? There certainly are. So trace fossils can be all kinds of things, including um, pieces of plant material that had uh, decayed away and left the shape behind. So there are certainly actual trace fossils that were found here in New Zealand. And if you go to different museums around New Zealand, you'll find different ones on display based on the region. Amazing. Oh, here's a good question. Why do triceratops have three horns instead of four or five? Now, that's a very good question because triceratops, tri means three, and three is referring to its horns. But the family that Triceratops comes, comes from, they were actually different types of dinosaurs that had more horns than just three. So the Triceratops is the one that we all know, but there are some other lesser known dinosaurs that did have four or five horns and even less horns, just two, and sometimes even one. So the family that Triceratops came from 
had other members that had different number of points. That's super cool. Yeah. Oh, here's a question that says, what kind of things did herbivore dinosaurs eat? Well, herbivore means that it likes to eat plants. So there were all kinds of prehistoric plants around back then. There actually weren't a lot of the plants we have now, but they would have had their own versions, mostly grasses and um, more trees like cabbage tree shaped trees, I'd say. So they had a limited choice, but they still had dinosaurs focusing on those parts of the ecosystem. Here's a good question. Was the Cryolophosaurus ever in Aotearoa? That's a really good question. So the fossil that we have at the museum and the picture that we saw in our show was of a Cryolophosaurus. And that specific fossil was found in Antarctica, which is pretty cool. And we know that dinosaurs like the Cryolophosaurus would have lived in Aotearoa because back when all of the continents were one big continent, New Zealand and, uh, and, uh, and Antarctica were right next to each other. So they would have shared some land and there could have been a possibility that Cryolophosaurus lived on the same land that would later become Aotearoa. Yeah. That's cool. Well, here's one. Did all dinosaurs have big mouths? Well, if you look at the range of dinosaurs, their mouths were usually in proportion to their bodies. So if the dinosaur was big, its mouth was usually the size to match based on what it was eating. So there were small, tiny dinosaurs around back then too. So they would have had small mouths to be in proportion with their anatomy. Ooh, here's a good question. How long ago did the Mosasaur live? So the Mosasaur lived from about 98 million years ago, which is quite a long time ago, up until about 65 million years ago, which is when all the other dinosaurs went extinct along with it. So Mosasaurs and even Plesiosaurs and Ichthyosaurs all went extinct at the same time when the, when the big asteroid hit the Earth. Very cool. Ah, this is a good question. What are dinosaur bones made out of? Well, all the dinosaur bones we see today are actually fossils. So even though they look like bones, they are all replaced with minerals instead. So it's safe to assume that different bones were made of similar substances as living things today, but we don't actually have proof of that because we can't actually get our hands on a real bone. But dinosaur bones are there as fossils and we can try and analyze those to piece together the history of dinosaurs. All right. Ooh. I think it's time we come to the end now. So thank you so much for your questions, everyone. And um, keep an eye out for our next Treasures and Tales live session. It's coming out soon. And well, I hope you had a great time learning about dinosaurs and sea monsters, and hopefully we'll see you again. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Kakiteano. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.